Australia has a vast, beautiful, but unforgiving landscape. One of the best ways to see this country is to ride across it. We intend to ride from coast to coast, starting in Sydney, New South Wales, and finishing in beautiful Bustleton, near Perth in Western Australia. What you're doing now, what you're saying now, can make the world of difference. Don't forget me now, won't you sing it loud? We'll need a place to remember. Not too short oh. to worry about if it's gonna happen. I decided to combine my passions for music and cycling by attempting to pedal and sing my way across Australia. Why? To help and encourage others to get out and enjoy music and sports like I do. Joining me is Patrick Legg, my coach and masseur. I suppose Simon's been back baby wipes as well to clean up my hands. <laughs> and Nick Gilbert, a former elite triathlete who hasn't ridden a bike for over 12 months. And I'm here as a ring-in for Sam to make sure he gets to Perth. A bit worried about myself getting to Perth, but we should be okay. After my transcontinental journey, I intend to compete in my favourite sport, the Ironman Triathlon. A four kilometre swim, 180 kilometre ride, and finishing with a full 42 kilometre marathon run. I enjoy competing in Ironman triathlons because they are one of the world's toughest single day events. Before I left my home in Melbourne, I went to visit my old friends at the Rocky Road Choir for a little sing-along. got some older people that have um, isolation and mobility issues, we've got people with mental health issues, we've got some people with intellectual disability. We come from a society, I think, where we're so used to giving people medication to make them better, where maybe it's not so much about the medication, maybe it's about getting them involved and getting them engaged and giving them the opportunity to express in a really, really positive way, which is, you know, that stuff around singing or art or playing cricket or kicking a soccer ball around or whatever. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I decided to do the ride, well, would have been about two and a half years ago. It was the oh, first okay. idea. And, and so it's taken a long, it's to taken get long together. time. It's taken a long time, So I, I started planning it about a year ago when I had to enter the Ironman, which I'm doing when I get there. Oh, okay. Um, so <laughs> since, since a year ago, it's been gradually sort of planning and ramping up and ramping up. Oh, so and the Ironman uh, at the end of it? At the end, yeah, when I get okay, there. Yeah, because the ride's not hard enough, so. Patrick uh, sent me a, an email uh, about a week ago to say, mate, you want to come for a bike ride across Australia? <laughs> Sydney to Perth on a bike, so I thought that was pretty crazy, considering I haven't trained really for the last 12 months. You ready? Do it. Yeah, all right, let's go. Well, I've had two chains fall off this morning, 
or the one chain, but twice. And then up this hill, I think I ran over some sticks or something and I've got a puncture. Day one, 25 days to go after this one. We're gonna go on the Western motorway. The M4, which is not fun on the bike. Nick was behind us and he uh, hasn't appeared yet. Maybe he turned off. Yeah. Was there when we were talking about going left to get the most of place? Yeah, he was. Yeah. But he might have just heard left. Left. <laughs> Here he comes. Hey! There you go. I end up in the raft place to start with. Oh, you went to the raft place? Well, I was about to turn. Yeah. And then I stopped and asked these guys, is it straight ahead? And then it went left. I started going up there. So, but then it doesn't take away the fact that I went up pretty slowly. <laughs> Well, yeah, we're thinking Sonny must have happened to you because uh, there's no way you're that slow. Right? <laughs> Nick's, Nick's going to find the campsite for us. Yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, you can't ride because he's so busy looking for the campsite. So, and uh, so do you actually want it in Katoomba or...? Yeah, in Katoomba. There's, def there's definitely one round the back here somewhere. Adjustments done. Good luck. Oh, you've done a hammy. <laughs> <laughs> he's been neutered. <laughs> As we made the mountain ascent towards Katoomba and our first campsite, the sudden temperature drop and rain caught me off guard. Bag. Sleeping bag straight ahead, Sam. Sleeping, sleeping bag. Go, go and dry off and then um, I'll sort your bike out later. You okay? Yeah, I'm alright. Okay. Yeah, no, okay, I'm good. I was a bit. A bit cold further down when it was raining, but yeah, it was all right. But for all the time, once we stopped, it got really cold. Hypothermia? Oh, not quite. Getting close. Yeah. You want to get inside? Yeah. Get inside and get some. Get warm. What happened? <laughs> it rained a lot, and we didn't have the right clothes. Yeah, poor old Sam got a bit uh, cold when we stopped in the rain there, and it was a bit. Uh, I was a bit crampy, a little bit lower down when it was really raining hard. So I was, I was quite glad of that little oven in there. I tell you, they got a little pie oven in the in the petrol station. You and your bloody pies. Well, tomorrow sounds pretty easy. It's only going to be about 80 odd k's or 90 k's or something. Um, hopefully we all stay nice and warm early on. It might get a bit cold early on down through the mountains if we get heading down. And then um, hopefully I can smash Sam around uh, Mount Panorama. So I'll definitely smash Nick wherever he is. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're going to Bathurst. You know. It's about 100 kilometres from here, so it's quite a short day. So then we're gonna, when we get there, we're going to ride around the track as well. So we'll have a bit more, a bit more mileage that way. Have you, have you walked down down all the steps and stuff? That's oh, nice, nice, just crazy. Oh, yeah. And basically, you can walk down the side of these cliff faces. All right, I guess it's time to push on. Yeah, off to Bathurst. Yeah, here we go. Great, let's go. The girl sits alone, stares at the rain. She's not the Go from one day being freezing cold and soaking wet to the next day overdressed and overheating. We set off across the Blue Mountains, expecting an ice easy ride to Bathurst. But it turned out to be much harder climbing than yesterday's ascent from Sydney up to Katoomba. This bike was not made for climbing. Good bike there, Sam. Probably not gears. It's designed to go very fast on the flat, this bike. So you get a steep hill like that, it's impossible. Well, push on. <laughs> I thought this was the top. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's walking. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
what I've done today, boys. Already? Yeah. yeah. Already? Seen some of those hills? Um, I'm not ready, mate, actually. <laughs> I'm, I'm off to the van. <laughs> <laughs> Bathurst contains one famous hill we must tackle, the Mount Panorama Racing Circuit. So the race was on. Four, three, two. Looks like I'm doing the washing up. The circuit is a public road for most of the year. As we crested the final hill, the panoramic view was the obvious inspiration for the track's name and was followed by a sensational downhill run to the finish. It's coming back down. It's like, oh, can't slow down enough. Can't race though. What happened to you? Who won the race? Sam. You're doing the cooking. <laughs> no, he's doing it. Yeah, we he didn't get cooked second. four. Oh. I just get to sit there and eat it. Oh, that's good. Better be you, mate. Am I finally? <laughs> Three days in and we had encountered more hills than expected. And now the wind was started to pick up. Close calls with trucks are a regular problem. Can you hear it? And now my bike's giving me grief. Oh, I can hear that. Oh, oh. should that that shouldn't shouldn't be moving. Well, I can I reckon the spray will sort it out. I reckon get the oil. Try it. Sam's going to get the spray. Oh, he's got the WD-40s out. It's guaranteed to break now. See? It has a picture of a bike. <laughs> it's got to work. Magic oil. <laughs> Let's just attract a bit more dirt and grit to it. You can't lean on the left arm anymore. Why not? I'll put it out here. Strain injury or something. I haven't watched on before, so I think I've been bending it too much. It's kind of stopped the pain a bit. We're on 150 so far. It's been really windy as well. So, a lot longer and a lot windier, but I think it's going to get worse. <laughs> I hope you're not as hilly next time. Oh. Today was a very tough day. It wasn't as tough as the first couple of days, but it was just long and hot and windy. Headwind pretty much the whole way, so. What's the ice for, Sam? Eh? Ice is to cool me down and to stop my wrist hurting. I was having problems because um, we've been breaking so much because we've been so many hills. We're getting RSI because I'm pulling the handles so tight and, not, and because the road's really bumpy as well. So this one's particularly bad, it's just here. And the last 30k I couldn't I couldn't put pressure on it. So I was just riding one arm basically and then this one started to hurt right all right towards the end as well. So, so I'm gonna try taping it up and see if it helps. 
Maybe waxing would be more fun. <laughs> yeah, would it, would it, Nick? Be yeah. fun, more fun to wax it. it well, I should have just left it on, left my hair there and yeah, just and ripped it afterwards. Yeah, that's, that's I, I thought about this, something scissors. <laughs> Be careful, Sam. I hope there's some scissors. You're trusting me with scissors. Oh, God. <laughs> Trim his moustache, Nick. What are you doing now? Today we're travelling to Ardleffen, but on the way we plan to stop off at the Tamora Museum. G'day. G'day. Welcome. <laughs> I'm Sam. Nice, nice to meet you. How are you, Sam? Hi. Good, Hi. thanks. Oriental Church. This, of course, is the little Havanian that used to be, uh, used to be played here uh, as a, as a, um, on, a, on a weekly basis. Almost a... Uh, uh, Keyboard, keyboard yes. from the 1880s. So it looks like a keyboard. Yeah, it all, it all packs up. <laughs> you see, you can actually pack the legs up and it all goes into the socket just like a oh. keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> hey, another one of those pianos. It also works. Oh. You've got to pump it. Oh, pump it. Yeah, I won't pump it. <laughs> Well, I brought you in here. That's a small um, uh, exhibition of the local cycling trophies that we have from the town. Why I'm particularly pleased with it, it's three generations of our local cyclists, and we not only have an image of the cyclist um, uh, with his bike, but there's also a cup in each of the pictures, and the cups in the pictures are actually in that cabinet. Well, fellas, this is the, uh, this is the Jimmy Sharman stuff, and uh, the reason that we've got it is that Jimmy actually started his career in Tamora. He was born in Narellan down in Sydney, but his grandparents lived next door to a, to a local uh, hall here in Tamora, and he actually started uh, his boxing career fighting in the hall. And uh, his, first, um, his first boxing tent was only at Ardlethan, and I think you'll be going to Ardlethan this afternoon. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. 1912, his first, his first boxing tent was there, and he went on, and he, he and his son um, were boxing promoters and showmen until 1971, so what's that, 60 years they were. Uh, uh, legends along, along the entire east coast of, uh, of Tamora. And the thing, what, what's important about this, this particular bell, it was, um, it was bought here in Tamora in 1911 and they used it to time all the rounds until about 19, until the 1950s. We also had one of his drums, he had a couple of the drums, and of course it was yeah, banging the drum. What did they do with the drum? Oh, it, getting attention. They're getting attention at the, on the way the in. Show. Just standing up there banging the drum and saying he'll take a glove and all that sort of stuff. They were great spruikers. Uh, if you could spruik, uh, that was mm. golden, you know, because you dragged the people in. So yeah. did people just want to fight him? Like, did they just turn up and... Yeah, just, just, just go and get to all the little country towns. Yeah. And he basically dared them to take on his, on his flakes. And, mm. and there's a photo here of all, of all his fighters on, on the uh, canvas out in front. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a, 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 a show of futuristic art. Wait for the bell, wait for the bell. Steady sports. Right, you and you have to go down the river. Excuse me, mate. This is a boxing tent. We have a winner. Oh, yeah. My judge's acclamation. A fantastic day done and dusted. But you just have to keep an eye out for those big B-double trucks. Yeah, we're going to swap 
today. So Nick will, Nick's actually driving the van for the first 150 or so, and then um, I'll jump in the van and Nick will ride with Sam the last 100 and whatever. The knees are holding up, so <laughs> hopefully he'll stay in one piece. Shift change and Patrick needed a rest. Nick joined me but soon had to stop with knee issues, so I was out on my own for the last 50 kilometres of the ride, battling a headwind and running out of time to get to Hay for the next gig. At least it gave me an opportunity to practice riding in the aero position. So we're just going into Hay, 240 kilometres cycle today. And uh, I have to play a gig when I get there at the uh, Sheep Shearing Museum. I make it. I got lost. <laughs> I'm trying to get a pretty one for you. It'll look that way. So, uh, Sam, this is the one you're going to be shearing. Am I? No, <laughs> oh, this is the deal. I had to get ready to play at the shearing shed, so Nick kindly Smooth. stepped in to finish the job. What to do, what to see, makes me want to go and see. All that you did, all that you said, it's not gonna go away. What did you say? 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 Yeah, his muscles are all a bit wound up now, so um, we'll just try and loosen them off tonight and see how we go. Nice little freshen up of the legs. Lovely. <laughs> I'm really enjoying myself. <laughs> <laughs> You do need motivation to push yourself through the pain barrier, otherwise you just don't do it. You feel the pain and you know the legs are hurting every pedal stroke. And if you don't have that motivation to push you through, you, do, you just don't continue pedaling. And sometimes it is just one pedal stroke at a time. I've got one bar of fuel left. Because I was on two bars, yeah. and then about 10 k's in, it went to one. And I'm like a bit worried that so you've been driving on one bar for? For about 40 k. <laughs> <laughs> so either I can get back to Hay, yeah. or maybe one of these side towns, because Bell Reynolds, what, was it about 80 away? Yeah, but yeah, I think that's And I just, I'm wondering if we're going to make it. What's yeah, there? there's definitely nothing. There's nothing there. Yeah. So Maud's our best shot. Maybe, we, yeah, we'll ring Maud. See if got Caravan petrol. Park. See if there's a petrol station at that town. Really out of the middle of nowhere. Yeah, this route is basically 130 kilometers. Would have been prudent to fill up before. <laughs> Lucky for us, we flagged down a passing road crew who were happy to help. The blokes from the RCA, they're going to give us 10 litres of fuel. Really? That'll get us to Val Reynolds. I was going to say, I'm a bit of a Frank Spencer when it comes to stuff like this. The idea of riding across Australia uh, for four and a half thousand kilometres is, is pretty daunting. It's good to be involved in a, you know, a, a project to challenge yourself and, and to help someone achieve a goal that they want to achieve. What did you do 
after that? Oh, um, just been working. Oh, oh. oh Nick. <laughs> What did you do, Nick? Uh, I don't think I got any twigs left. <laughs> <laughs> or berries, as they're called. I got up at about 5.30 and left at about quarter past six, something like that. Quite early, but it's nicer because it's less windy and there's less cars around. Yeah, after a week, I'm pretty much aching everywhere. But it's kind of to be expected. Today, when we get to Mjordjura, we'll be a quarter of the way across. So, that's nice. We're nearly out of the first county. No, what's it called? State. State. <laughs> if you're out there on the bike, a bit from under your wheels, um, it, sometimes it breaks you and sometimes it makes you. You don't challenge yourself. You don't, you know, in, well, you don't really find out exactly what you want to do with yourself, do you? <laughs> We're going to Palmera. Palmera? In South Australia. South Australia. <laughs> oh, they're close. At the South Australia border, we met a fellow cyclist with his own amazing story to tell. And uh, you've done across Australia before? Around Australia. Around it? Yeah, it was 16,400k. Wow. Yeah. So you crossed the Nullarbor as well, which yeah. is obviously where we're going. Yeah. How yeah. was that? That was sort of something I dreaded right from the start. You know, like, <laughs> wow, that's you know, 100, it was 146 kilometres of you know, straight as an arrow. Flat as a pool table. Right? So, how about with the um, road trains and things like that? How were they? Um, it really depended on which way the wind was blowing. Road trains are actually, I actually got quite smart with them after a while. You know, if the the wind was right, the road conditions were right. I'd what you know, I had a rear vision on my um, touring bike. See so the mirror. If the if the road, <laughs> you know, I'd see, I'd see the see them touring in the distance. <laughs> so I'd I'd get some momentum up yep. as soon as I pass it get into their slipstream and uh, we get pulled along sort of you know 400 meters yeah <laughs> so that all that's all saving energy yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have a good one all right cheers pal nice to meet you thanks man leaving new friends and pesky flies behind we set out into the main heat of the day hey guys We didn't get that far before I got a puncture. Ooh, feel, yeah. Thankfully, Pat's pretty quick and was able to get the bike back on the road in no time at all. Nick decided to take a break. So Pat and I set off again with 75 kilometres to go. I'm calling you. Tell me, tell me. Can we do something wrong? I'm going to go and jump in there in a sec. What a location. Lake Bonnie. This place has got everything. <laughs> to the pool, the jumping mat, beautiful Lake. ride in along the yeah. river through some beautiful little towns. It's it a great best, day. Best day of riding so far, probably easily, I'd say. Yeah, I reckon. You have all my affections, save them for myself this time. You know what I'm giving, 
wanna make things right Spend another night out Out on the town Out again Out in the night Looking for a place to go out again Want to know what's right One day at a time So tomorrow we've got about 180 k's, yeah? Just a bit yeah, under. If we go straight, yeah. if we go to Gawler via the wine place. Via Peter Lehman. Yeah. 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 So we're going to be like wobbling around our bikes so. after Lehman wine tasting. Well, you will be. Yeah, it's a tasting, so you can see. I'm not sure Nick has a little spitting thing. Alright. Yeah, so you don't actually drink it. You wobble about most of it. You're going to be going, Are we going to find out now what it means to know? After a few days of relatively flat terrain, we entered the Mount Lofty Ranges, which meant more climbing. Luckily, the hills were much smaller than in the Blue Mountains, but as we rolled into the Barossa Valley, my knee was giving me a lot of trouble. Now, how's the knee? Hurting. A lot. <laughs> Left knee? Yeah. yeah. A big bump. <sighs> so I just made it through. Yeah, and my, then my uh, quad started going on the other leg because I was just using one leg for the last 30k. When I was 13, I fell over in the playgrounds, skidded across on my knee, and I got a bruise, and it turned into bone. Um, and it's called Osgood Slatter's disease. Um, it basically means that it, you can't put a lot of pressure pushing down on your leg. And it just basically hurts if you do a lot of pressure, pressure pushing. And chose so, a good sport then. So I it? chose a good sport with cycling, yeah. Yeah. If it's gonna happen, let it go, I'm not gonna say. It'll come around, you'll get a chance on a better day. If it's gonna happen, let it go, I'm not gonna say. It'll come around, you'll get a chance on a better day. Hello. How are you? Very well, thank you. Welcome. So I'll tell you a little bit about the winery. Um, Peter Lehman Wines was established in 1979. Peter was a, he's a bit of a legend here in the Barossa. He actually started the winery to save all the growers in the Barossa because it was during a downtime in the wine industry and he bought the winery so the growers had somewhere to sell their grapes because the big companies were refusing to. So. To this day, we still have 150 growers that sell to us every vintage, so we have access to all these wonderful wines. So this is our Black Queen Sparkling Shiraz. So it's premium Shiraz, which is very soft, which spends 12 months in oak barrels, and then it's bottled and has a secondary fermentation in the bottle, like a method champenoise. Mm. Nice. It's yeah, busy. It's busy. <laughs> it's busy. Yeah, it's busy. It's busy. There we go. Thanks. All the best for the rest of the ride. We hope we stay straight on the bike now after. Well, that's right. <laughs> Don't want any nasty incidents. No. Oh. <laughs> well, after that visit, our riding day is done and dusted. <laughs> <laughs> and soon they all would realize that something wasn't right. Sweet and sweet and sweet again. This was no accident. Retreat to all their friends. Um, we had about a bit of musical wheels. 
This is my wheel, but it got a puncture yesterday. So instead of fixing it, we just swapped it with uh, Nick's wheel. But then Pat swapped with Nick, so Nick didn't have a front wheel. So we put Pat's wheel on Nick's bike. At the moment, I don't feel that tired. Um, just my muscles will be aching when I get back on the bike again. I've got a bit of a first aid emergency. Okay, what's up? I got hit on the helmet, not the hat, by a bee. By a bee? Yeah, it bounced off and landed on my leg. Arse first. <laughs> it stung you. <laughs> I'm alright. It hurts. It's a tiny little mark. Alright, well, we'll see you in about 15 minutes. What took you so bloody long? Literally, from the moment we talked to you, Three minutes later, we were on the road. Jeez. That's how long it's taken us to get there. <laughs> Just the other side of Gawler, we are deep in sheep country. The land is dry this year, so we decided to stop off at the Whispering Wall, built in 1983. It forms the Barossa Valley Reservoir, and it has the unique ability to broadcast a whisper from one side of the dam to the other. We just had to give that a go. Mate, what do you know about this wall? <laughs> I know that it's at least given us a big, big gap between you and us. Mate, I, I couldn't be happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> I believe this entire wall was built by a large contingent of country bumpkins. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> did any of them have the surname Gilbert? <laughs> <laughs> I think most of them did. <laughs> Give you a moon, a moon shine from here, mate. <laughs> well, that bounced off the wall too. <laughs> After Nick's performance, it's probably best that I just get on with my show. still to go and I have to say that tomorrow is going to be one of the, I think I can say this bugger of a day, you're riding into a, a strong north wind, 39, 40 degrees and I can tell you you'd want to be on the road before 7 in the morning because it's going to be a hot one. With the forecast of 80 km per hour headwinds and 40 degrees centigrade, we decided to leave early and were joined by some Port Broughton locals for the first hour. Seven days. Most riders will know that riding on the shoulder has its challenges, but today was way too close for comfort. Too fast. So it was coming the other way, it was probably about 200 metres away. 
on one of the tiles or two of the tiles and it just exploded into like a million pieces. The, uh, the mud flap fell off, it like blew off the side, and the whole shower of tyre pieces came from up towards us. Yeah, yeah, Sam got hit there. Yeah. I got a rock in the chest. Yeah, yeah. It was but, after. And then, and then a load of trucks came past the area where there's like millions of bits of tile. Bits of just flying up everywhere. everywhere. And then to top that off, just afterwards, a massive truck carrying a house came <laughs> flying past us. So. Well, it's, it's actually it's pretty, it's pretty scary. scary today. Well, yeah, we we'll are drive in the van and they come the other way and the oh, van just, just, just rocks. Gets, smashed when they come at you yeah and when they go past you they suck you along for yeah. 200 meters swap over or come out Squirt water to each other yeah we're swapping over yeah first 80 kilometers per hour headwinds yeah. then exploding tires now that should be more than enough excitement for today right Australia has many unique monuments and landmarks, so hearing about the Iron Knob, we thought it best to investigate. Well, that's annoying. <laughs> I thought it would be something on the road, not something that's like 5k that way. <sighs> not doing any extra... No, any extra not doing all. any extra. I'm exhausted. Nearly halfway across without pulling off a bike. Got halfway across Australia without a puncture. I only got two. Doesn't look like halfway across. Knee two. Oh. That's, a, that's a, an arm and a forearm. Yep. <laughs> On the other Knee side? Two. quite a bit further, doesn't it? <laughs> That's not quite a bit further. But... across was marked by a giant tennis racket. Halfway point marked by a giant galah. And in between we had an iron knob. The, at the end of the uh, trip at Bustle. What is that? A giant pier. A giant pier? I've got to swim around it, haven't I? Yeah, 1.9 <laughs> kilometres long. Longest pier in Australia. All right. We're halfway across Australia, kilometre wise, so it's 4,000k across and we've done about 2,000. So yeah, it's good to get one of the long days out of the way as well, which is nice. One of the, days, the first of four. First of four over 200 kilometres in a row. In a row, yes. Today we've had, um, I think, three towns in 250 kilometres, one of which was pretty much completely shut. Um, so basically two shops in 250 kilometres to buy stuff. Um, I think it's just going to get less now. Oh. 
That's called a stack. Did you have a bit of trouble with the sand, mate? <laughs> <laughs> Nick just fell off his bike again. I had a bit of trouble with the sand too, but I managed to keep going. <laughs> We're in Minipa and they've got a lovely Australian. They got the thing. crapper. The concrete crapper. <laughs> Rooster sides this side. Oh. That's really weird. Well, I'll leave you to it. Yeah, no worries. How was your experience? Wow, that's so cool. <laughs> you make noise in there, it's like a, like a little boom box. Oh. Whoa. In the middle of nowhere, we were finding all sorts of unexpected things. That is on a giant ant. Yeah. Oh. How did you find that ant? Yeah. You have a lot of fun on that ant, mate. It's a good ant, isn't it? Yeah. Is it fast? It's very fast. Got here quicker than you, didn't I? It did. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's a super ant. So they're a throwback to the era when ants were just coming into existence from solitary wasps. Bye bye, Mrs. Ant. <laughs> now, boys, see you in Gina. Yep, see you there. After the giant ant, a town with a secret. Hey, hello. How are you going? Do you know what the secret is? Yes. It's a catch, no, are you? It's the secret. It's the secret. Oh, really? No. Oh, well, I guess it wouldn't be a secret then. <laughs> no, it wouldn't be a secret for told you, so no. <laughs> but if you ask around, you never know what you might find in Wirral. Oh, OK. It's just if you go just down the road here, half a kilometre, we actually have a jetty. A jetty? Right. A jetty, yeah. In the middle of Australia. Yes. <laughs> and you can, you, can, you can actually walk down the jetty and, and tee off. Number nine hole it is. Number nine? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, so. Cool. I could do a swim. Yeah, it's a bit hot. It is real hot. You're gonna jump in. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna jump in. Ready? Oh, oh my god! <laughs> Where's the water? This is something to do with the secret. The secret is they have no water, I think. <laughs> <laughs> then at the end of the ride, a cultural centre full of amazing pictures and artwork. Welcome, Sam, to the Sajuna Arts and Cultural Centres. I can show you around and show you some of the artists who work here. So do you just sort of make up the patterns as you're going along? Have you got yeah, I just make, no, I just oh, make the patterns as I go along, yeah. The first one I've done was the wind in the grass. And the background is just a bit of the colours that I like to use to represent the... Monday. Monday is what we call, yeah, the floor. This one here was one of my first wildflower ones that got sent to Europe. <laughs> wow. And they got seeds inside of them. This is the witchetty grubs, which we call mugu. Mm. And this is the wild plum. This is the wild apricot. And this is wild tomatoes. Um, Kwandong, sorry. Mangada. Mangadas. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very Thanks much. So much. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you. Sam. And Nick. Nick. Thank you. Nick and Patrick. Yeah, Patrick. Best of luck. Yeah. Thank you. And thank, thank you. We're in Penang at the last shot for a thousand kilometres. So I didn't forget the fuel, Sam, and I didn't forget the water. Oh, that is very good. Well done. <laughs> and you did get the gas bottle, didn't you? I didn't get any, any, I didn't get a gas bottle. Why not? Didn't know I had to. <laughs> <laughs> you just never listen, do you? We bought quite a lot of water. I think how many litres we've got about 140? We must have at least 140 now with all those little ones, mm -hmm. the other ones filled up. So, yeah. We've got water. We've got some food and snacks. And we have no idea if we have gas. <laughs> we've got a bottle, but we don't know if it's got any gas in it. Camping needs. We've got a bus. What do we need? As we headed into the wilderness, 
there was no sign of traffic or other people. They decided to resurface the road and make it like five times rougher. <laughs> Just as the head had been picked up, so that was fun. We're going to go along quite nicely until then. We expected there to be nothing but open space. But 100 kilometres down the road, we came across a busy shop. It's a shop. They said there was no shops for 1,000 kilometres. I don't believe everything you read. It's definitely a shop. So it wasn't supposed to be the longest day today, but it ended up being the longest day at all. So what's, all what's right. the distance all that? Two, 2.59 today. <laughs> the last 100k has just been just through bushland, and every, you just look everywhere and it's just bush. Nothing else. I mean, we were coming over the hill, and there was like all you could see was like the bush and stuff in the distance, and then it was like the sun coming through oh. the clouds, and it was doing this kind of sort of filtered yeah, cool yeah. effect. It looked yeah. amazing. That looked really good. It's definitely the best view I've had on the whole trip so far. After a night camping in the bush with huge winds rocking the van and tents, we set off into the start of the Nullarbor. 1,200 kilometres of treeless plains, which is more or less a desert. Just as we entered, we bumped into another cyclist riding around Australia. Igor had been on the road for 10 months and was on the way back to Sydney. I love the messaging system along the road. You yeah. know, talk to people and tell you who is ahead, who is behind, and they give you messages. <laughs> like, I've been hearing about Red Nose Thomas for weeks before I met him. Yeah. And I'm thinking, why do they keep talking about Red Nose Thomas? <laughs> like, I don't know who he is. He's only two days behind. So, okay, that's fine. And then, then we met, and, you know, so he's kind of... And did he talk. have a red nose? He did, he did, yeah. <laughs> he's got this, you know, zinc? Creams that you've got. I don't know why he just chooses to use a red one. So he's got he's got a red nose. Yeah, yeah. Pleasure to meet you, man. Keep safe. Then down the road a little further, we caught up with some more unexpected riders. So Patrick. Yes. I'm Isabella's friend from uni. <laughs> Amazing that we've seen you. Isabel did mention something just as I was leaving. That you, you know, oh, you'll probably run into my friend. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so where did you start? Perth, and we'll come around the coast, down Niagara okay, yep. River, it's friends. Uh, and uh, we'll finish in Torquay because that's my hometown. Okay. And go along the Great Ocean Road to end it. Riding the bike. What yeah. do you think? I'm here with my mate Rui. Rui too. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a door? You can stick your head out of his head. Look. Boing. That's Joey Nick. <laughs> Joey Nick. Isn't that how far it is to Perth? 1462 kilometres. Nice work. We had completed the third state, with only one more state to go. Unfortunately, Western Australia is Australia's biggest state, and we still had a lot of cycling ahead of us. It was a very ominous start to the day, riding out into heavy thunderstorms. About making a bit of a difference, it's more about being a better person yourself, I think. So making the world a difference to everybody because you're doing the things that you should be doing to help out everybody else, that you, like, just in small ways. Being the best that you can be, and then if everybody else does the same thing, then the planet's going to be a better place. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
raining, pelting cats and dogs out there. That's a bit of rain. A bit. Ready to go. Into That's the rain. Best acting I've ever seen. Oh. Luckily, the storm was short lived and we were soon safely back on our way. Going along really well. The storm pretty much blasted us off the road. Thunder and lightning, and then a downpour. Yeah, the two thunderstorms were a little bit of a problem. It started off well though, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. We'd done, done about 120k before the first one came out. Oh yeah, yeah. We got a fair chunk of the ride done and then the thunderstorm came through. First one, and then we did about another 50k and another thunderstorm came through, which we were riding towards, which was quite scary. Oh, so we got here at half past 12 today, which is a bit earlier than normal. Usually about 6.30. It's isn't usually it? about 6.30. <laughs> so yeah, 180k before, before lunchtime. Not bad. It's a pretty good day. day yeah, yeah pretty good day's work. That's the best speed so Definitely far. Definitely easily it? the highest average. Yeah. 33, 34 kilometers an hour. We arrived in town early, so we decided to have a round of golf. The Nullarbor Lynx is the world's longest golf course, spanning over 1,300 kilometers, from Seduna in South Australia to Kalgoorlie in Western Australia. Here's the hole. Perhaps we'll just play one hole. Oh, the pressure. Oh. Oh, 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 it's in the car God. park. <laughs> I told you, you could go anywhere. <laughs> in the car. Right. This course is too hard for us. We, we need something that's, that's really wide. This has grass. <laughs> Nothing else. My duck. It's in there. Has he gone off with the tee? I think he has. How am I going to play my shot? That's not dropping it right. You have to hold it at arm's length like this. Oh. And drop it. Like from the bush? No, two, two club lengths away from where the, where the ball was in the bush. One, two, yeah. And then drop it on the There you go. He <laughs> 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 just took it out of there. One, two. I'll just take my shot. Patrick, throw it. Did you see that, guys? What? It's on the green. Oh well. You're on shot nine, I believe, and you're on shot four, and I'm on yep. on five. Five. Oh my God! Oh. Oh. There we go. I think we're a tie. I have no idea. Seven. Seven. Pretty oh, sure. Seven all. Seven all. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> he lost again. He lost it all over his trousers. So what's happening is the vibration on the rough roads is causing the bolt just to shear straight through. So we've got to have replacement bolts for the um, hydration unit at the back here. Snapped in half. I don't know where the other one's gone, the other one disappeared. We're two thirds of the way across Australia now, so, but we've still got to get down from Perth down to Busselton, which is another 250, plus the Ironman at the end. So, we're just over halfway of the total ride distance. Put my nice mirror back on. This isn't a Velcro thing to put on it. I have to exercise every day, otherwise I get grumpy. And I think a lot of people that sit at home and don't do anything are probably partly grumpy because they're not doing exercise. Because it, it just makes you feel good. Halfway across the Nullarbor is Cockle Biddy, which is famous for its cave. The Cockle Biddy Cave is a single passage, more than six kilometres long, and 90% of the cave is underwater and only accessible by cave diving. Not something we had time to explore fully. Hello. That is one serious hole. Yeah, I just thought it was going to be a little cave that you could just Yeah, fall into. same here. I thought it was going to be a little 
Port hole. Great little hole. Ooh. He made it out. Hello. <laughs> Plumbing's fixed. <laughs> Every day for the last probably about six or seven days, my knees have hurt for the first 30k. And then they just warm up and it's fine. So I guess my main concern is that they're just going to get worse and not warm up. I'm not so worried about the pain, it's more about whether I damage my knees. It's still pedal by pedal. Every time I'm moving on the bike, I'm getting closer to where I'm going. Um, so I, yeah, I don't worry about thinking that there's 2,000 kilometres to go. We're in Kaguna, but not for long. Was it day 18? We're going on the Australia's world's longest ever Australian straight road. Or something. I go out to the other side of town. Can I find a better place to spend the night? It's so unusual. Found a place to park. It's a sign of things you can when stay in this side. What are you doing for me now? At the end of the 90 mile straight, is the Balladonia Roadhouse, home to a particularly large huntsman spider. Oh, he's got his things out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Skylab's re-entry will be awesome. 79 tons boring its way into the atmosphere like a shooting star burning and breaking up into an estimated 500 pieces of molten metal, all streaking across the sky in a spectacular display of light. The people of Esperance had been told a week earlier that there was a possibility it could be heading in this direction, but they were told it's going to land in the ocean, and of course that was wrong. So a lot of debris was scattered over hundreds of kilometres in this region, the largest being an oxygen tank, which was the size of a car. It's the first space station. What's it doing here? Well, it's probably a mock-up. It's crash-landed. World's eye focus on Balladonia. And the US president phoned up the roadhouse <laughs> to say, Oh, sorry, we dropped to our satellite. Oh, can here. we have it back, please? Yes. No, 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 no it's just and just apologise and said they'd assist with any damage. Oh. Oh, okay. Anyway, how about some lunch? It's with the half a oh, car. Yeah. Well, there's half a satellite, so why not half a car? Does someone say hamburgers? Let's go. Me. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> it's raining and windy. In Norseman, we met more fellow cyclists. These two have taken cycle touring to a whole other level. So what countries did you go? You started in France. France, Italy, yeah. Italy, uh, Croatia, yeah. Croatia, Serbia, Bulgaria, Turkey, yeah. and uh, then uh, Georgia, Azerbaijan, yeah. Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, China, oh. Vietnam, mm. Laos, Cambodia. <laughs> Ten months? Thailand. Your journey is epic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, that's crazy. What do you think of the conditions today? It was horrible today. It's very windy, very rainy, thunderstorms. A bit of everything, really. A little bit of sun. That's pretty cool. Nullarbor was 1,200 kilometres from start to finish. And it was the bit I was most worried about, really, before starting the whole trip across Australia because I just thought it was going to be hard into the wind all the time and boring, I guess. But I actually found it quite good. Look at the van! <laughs> Today just gets better and better, eh? 
feel? Just call the just call the breakdown people. Just give me a second. What the fuck are you gonna do? Trust me. Start the van stuck in the dirt. All right, let's get some scrub and stuff. Now get over. We need more Max's protein yeah. powder to be yeah. bigger, yeah. bigger yeah. stronger. Oh. Oh. Need more pancakes. Oh. Luckily, some very helpful locals stopped to give us a hand. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking. Yeah, straight around underneath the front of the van. I didn't realise how far in they were. Yeah, we might as well hold on to that, mate. We're pretty deep. Oh, really? Yeah, you can. He's going to have to go underneath. I'll put the towel view to the front here where it's meant to go. Huh? I'll pull the front end clean off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, where were you? You don't want that. I'm straight out around the wishbone. From this point. We're toast. Yeah, wrap around. Cheers, mate. Cheers, fellas. Thanks, guys. Crazy gusts. Yeah. You're going along nicely, and suddenly you just get blown across the other side of the road. I wonder how you can hold your bike up like this. It all falls apart. Yeah. <laughs> Flat roads allowed us to maintain a great pace, but the trucks on this road were incredibly dangerous. Fucking hell! Come on. I'll tell you what, mate, I nearly got cleaned up. I fucking... I was nearly dead. We nearly got wiped out by two trucks in a row. About five. Well, the first two, and then we got off the road, and the next four <laughs> went through screaming fast. Is that, that close? Yeah. So, luckily, there was no side drafts at the time, because if there was, it would have been we straight under into the it. trucks. So, yeah, it's just too dangerous. We were just basically... We're on the white line, and on the left of the white line is a ditch. And on the right of the white line is a bloody great big truck. Yeah. <laughs> Just one of those days, mate. Stupid day. I was nearly dead. Go to car losses and just go to, go to the campsite. <laughs> We were here yesterday, we're here again today. We're 55k behind, so we'll just keep riding until we get knackered. Yesterday and last night, we we were just late leaving in the morning, so we, we were about four or five hours behind schedule, and then it, just, it was just too windy. The mine trucks were leaving and there were just so many of them going flying past us and there's absolutely no shoulder on this road as well so it just got a bit scary. See you later. Mother of the goldfields. <laughs> One of the things I was mostly worried about when we were crossing the Nullarbor was the trucks coming up. And actually the trucks on the Nullarbor were really good. 
If there was a truck coming towards you, they'd actually slow down and wait for the truck to go before they went past and they'd give you space. But round here, all the gold mines and everything, um, trucks coming towards you, the one coming this way just keeps going at 110 kilometers an hour with this much space between you and the truck. And there are no shoulders either. So it gets very scary. You've got 40 kilometer an hour winds in your face. All you can hear is the whole time. And you know, you've got no idea anything's, anything's behind you. So it's, it's, it's weird how you can not know that there's a three trailer truck coming up for you 110 kilometers an hour. I thought it was nice to get a Norseman, then we had two really horrible days. But it's nice to get to the end of the day and know you've got back on track again. So yeah, I'm enjoying myself now I've got here. <laughs> so we're 440 kilometers away from Perth now, which we're going to do in three days, so it's be nice. it should be nice and easy. Tailwinds today. Well, a little crosswinds, but at least they're not, not headwinds. And it's sunny and not too cold and not too hot. Yeah, it's pretty good. The reason the Southern Cross was founded was because in the early days pastoralists were looking for grazing and they came from Northern 2J and places like that, heading east. Some prospectors left Golden Valley and followed the Southern Cross stars, headed south yes. and uh, they found gold. Well, I hope you remember Southern Cross. Oh, well, uh, it's a very nice, clean town. <laughs> We've got a lot of history. And uh, oh, once again, I'll thank you very much for thank you very much. turning up. That was a pleasure. And uh, you. good to meet you. And I hope you have every success with the rest of your journey, which is nearly over. <laughs> <laughs> Off the freaking road, you silly bugger. <laughs> Don't go me. Come on the side of the road. The rabbit proof fence was built in the early 1900s to stop the spread of rabbits that had been introduced by early settlers. The fence in Western Australia runs 3,256 kilometres, all the way from the south coast to the north coast of Australia. There's not much of it left. Is that it? One gate. <laughs> going the wrong way. Rabbit through fence. <laughs> Keep going the wrong way. It's not working very well. No, big gap there. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> I'm just here to keep the rabbits out. Oh, I hit the fence. Oh. I guess I should really get some laps in to prepare for my triathlon. We're going to York. As we neared the west coast, more roads were available and we were able to take a more scenic route. Yeah, good, that was fun. <laughs> Probably wasn't fun for Sam, but it was fun for me. A little bit of pace on the back roads. Then we ended up in York, where we were invited to take part in a square dance. 
York was the first inland settled town in Western Australia. Do any of you come from Melbourne? Yes. yes. We were settled before Melbourne. Before Melbourne? Yes, I like to boast that to <laughs> Melbourne <Wow>. people. <laughs> right. <laughs> Early settlers came to Perth in, uh, or Ferrantle was, in 1829, and it was um, uh, pretty sandy down there, and they soon realised that they needed some uh, land for farming. York is a historic town with plenty of old haunted buildings, like the old city jail. Workload was getting too heavy. Perth wouldn't send anyone else, that, that's, supposedly. And he hung himself. And there's his orb. And it does keep coming up in photos. It's come up in a lot of photos. Twice it's happened here. A family member has stood in the witness box to take photos of a family member up on the bench, and the orb shows up. Oh my God, said no, I'm not going. <laughs> I'm going to take a photo of you, Sam. Okay. Try and find this orb thing. Mm -hmm. Not there. This was the 1874 courtroom. Oh. It had, in those days, no electricity. I think it looks as though we've got some sort of power there now. <laughs> but the um, Queen Victoria, the Queen of the time, and the Union Jack and this is where the court was held. And the prisoners were brought out through this cell into the, um, into the, um, where the accused had to stand while the, while the court was held. Not very, not very large cells. No, small doors. Well, that'd be perfect for me. Yeah. I'll have a look. Okay. Oi, kick the door in. Don't be silly, Nick. You'll hurt yourself. Prison, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we didn't want to lock you in with your smells. Oh, yeah, yeah you're gonna kill yourself. Your gas chamber. <laughs> Ooh. This was the Aboriginal cell uh, where they used to chain them up because they didn't like to be in here, they made big efforts to escape. Oh. Hey. They wouldn't they, they wouldn't be able to keep you here, would they, Pat? You won't be able to you won't be able to ride tomorrow now. Good, good try. Oh my god. Why is it always me? <laughs> because you were silly enough not to pick it up first and have to put it around somebody else's neck. I'll do it myself. Oh yeah. Anyone got a lock? <laughs> Let me out! <laughs> what a shame. I'm out first. <laughs> Get past <laughs> As we crossed the old York Bridge, we were looking forward to our last night of the journey across Australia. We had already cycled over 4,000 kilometres, but the next day would be just a short ride down to Perth on our first city for 24 days. This is quite a freaky bridge to ride on. <laughs> Stop wobbling at you. Ah! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Back. Oh. Oh. This isn't going to be fun, this last bit, is it? No, I don't, I don't like it already. We can break the countryside. <laughs> Busy trucks, cars. 
wormhole works. We tried to take the bike paths, but got totally lost and ended up riding right through the middle of the city. Eventually, we found Swan River and the Bell Tower, which marked the end of the journey across Australia. Perth, that's it. We had travelled 4,100 kilometres in 24 days. <laughs> that was so awesome. Yeah, you do one. Coming into Perth was quite nerve-wracking because we'd been in the country for so long and we'd had people taking wide berth around us and, um, and a lot less traffic. When you come into Perth and you hit that first set of traffic lights and then the traffic starts to build up and they start whizzing past you an inch to the right-hand side of you. So it was pretty nerve-wracking. So to be honest, I spent most of the time concentrating on not getting knocked off my bike and not really feeling about where where we were coming into and what we'd achieved. And it wasn't really until we got to the bell tower when it was like, yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, the city's all right, but I think I prefer the country after all those times in the out in the Nullarbor and in the country towns and that sort of thing. How do I feel like I've been doing this for ages? <laughs> We're in Perth. It's it's good. Very happy. Do you want to get involved in the bowls now? Yeah, we'll play a little yeah. bit of bowls. Okay. Good. We're disorganized here. Yeah. We've got so many people. Yeah. We've got limited resources, so I'm going to throw you in amongst everybody else. That's I'll fine. pull you over. I'll give you a overview on the game. Have you ever played before? Yeah. Once or twice at school. Yeah, back not at school, not yeah. enough though to back really school, remember. Yeah. Okay. No. I'll give you an overview. And we'll get you some bowls, and we'll just get you started. Yeah, cool. that's great. Good. <laughs> All right. Yeah. RecLink Australia is a wonderful organisation that provides sport and arts programmes to disadvantaged Australians <laughs> and creates inclusive, life-changing opportunities. <laughs> I'm playing first. <laughs> You're first. I don't know what I'm doing though. Can you, you just pick me? the ball up? <laughs> yeah, show us how it works. Yeah. yeah. Okay, guys. Yep. I take you the play. Okay. okay. One, one ball. Lawn Bowls is one of hundreds of RecLink Australia supported events. These events help people like Jonathan get out and enjoy themselves. It makes a huge difference to their lives. I think they're hard now. Oh, yeah. John, but too far. Good shot. Next. I think those ones are mine. I had a brownie one. You're going down. Yeah. Oh, natural sports, but well done. I think they're held now. Oh, yeah. It's close, look at it. Oh, you're up there. Oh, this question's on. Am I winning? Does that mean I'm winning? So make sure your feet are both on the mat. Right there, yep. But over, on the mat. Entirely yeah. on the mat, and then you'll step forward your right hand and just step forward with your left foot. Okay. When you swing your arm. Back. All right. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. We're sledging him. We're sledging him. That's a bow one, okay? Slow one, all right. Ooh, could be a good one. Ooh. Oh, that's pretty good, oh, that. That's dead on. It's going to take the jack. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh nice shot. <laughs> Pick one you work out who's winning as well, Sean. Yeah, we're going to work out. Uh, that was my one. Did I win? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one point to me. <laughs> This was a great way to end the day, but it was also, sadly, the end of Nick's journey. Oh, it's been a pleasure, mate. Ah, cheers. Yeah, um, thanks for coming. It's been great. It's been a blast. 
really has. I'm so glad you came along because it's made it so much easier. Oh, that's good. All of us. Yeah, it's a pleasure having you along. <laughs> <laughs> They're all really good, good bunch of guys. Pat and Sam are great. I'm still like, in admiration of Sam, what he's done, and the fact that he organised all this and his music as well. Uh, and he, he completed the full distance. Like, at the start of the tour, I was, I, I wasn't sure if, if we get there, but we're here. Safe flight back, mate. Yep. No. Um, we'll well, do. See you back in Melbourne. All gone, all gone's plan. Apart from a couple of days, but we got it back, so it's fine. Legs are tired, butt's tired. So it's nice to be finished. We're in Busselton. Woo! Oh, the hardest part of the ride was undoubtedly the start. The first day it was really cold going through the Blue Mountains, it was raining. And then the second day was really hilly and we were hurting and just, yeah, so it was, it was definitely the first few days, even the first week was the hardest bit. I really enjoyed Bathurst, going for that lap around, around Mount Panorama. That day itself was tough, because that was the second day in and I um, was just getting my fitness was, well, it wasn't even coming then, but it was, uh, it was a shock to the system. I, I think I pulled out about 40 k's that day because of, um, I actually, actually couldn't, I couldn't get the bike to move anymore. I think we were all a bit nervous about the Nullarbor because it's 900 or 1,000 kilometres across and we were expecting headwinds the whole way and 40 degrees. And... Oh, it turned out to be this nice leisurely ride across a, quite a picturesque strip of road. tailwinds most of the way and it was about 25 degrees most of the way. Coming into Perth, it, it was a little bit of anti-climax actually. <laughs> We're here in Perth. Here in Perth. <laughs> it was great that we arrived and that sort of thing but I don't know it just seemed like we worked all this time to get here and then oh god we're here. Now what? <laughs> but no, a really great achievement and I'm really happy to, to arrive. I've never done anywhere near this amount of cycling in one month. Sam would have averaged 180 kilometres a day for 26 days. And because Nick and I shared a bit of the driving, we averaged about 120 kilometres a day. Every day he, he got up, 5.30 in the morning, he was on that bike, and you know, most of the time he did it with a smile on his face. In fact, he was happiest when he was on his bike. I think it's a pretty cool achievement to do, to ride across Australia. It's a pretty big country. <laughs> At the start of the tour, I, was, I wasn't sure if, if we'd get there, but we're here. Not many people need to do it that quickly. <laughs> They're all really good, good bunch of guys. Pat and Sam are great. I'm still like in admiration of Sam, what he's done. Look, anyone who thinks that they can't do something like riding across Australia, they only have to look at Nick, who has spent 18 months living overseas and not doing any exercise. He came along, he suffered through the first three or four days, and his fitness just built up and built up and built up, and he was fine after that, and he just flew. Well done. We made it, finally. We did, we did. Oh. And just before the storm. It's true. Start again. Yeah. 
After four weeks away from home, I could not wait to see my family. We were all really excited and looking forward to seeing each other. How are you? Do you remember Daddy? Yeah. <laughs> not sure. She's not sure. Just said in the car, we're driving along about five minutes ago, she said, it's such an exciting day. And I said, why? She said, it's daddy day. Hey. The day before the race was the welcome dinner, where I played my final gig of the tour. I just cycled here from Sydney to do the, <laughs> to do the island. You cycled here from Sydney? Cycled from Sydney. Yeah, okay. And I started about 27 days ago. Sam Pollard, welcome to Barcelona. Great to have you here. Well done. Take it away. Thanks, <laughs> I'll be spending all my time Wondering how it's gonna end Think about if I can get through another day I'll be spending all my life Look around what's happening now Think about the world There are over 40 official Ironman triathlons each year spread out across the world and three of them are in Australia. Nearly 2,000 athletes, including myself, were entered for the Bustleton Ironman. As the race takes a full day, we have to take all the equipment needed for the bike and run legs into the transition area, the day before the race. It's a very complex and long race and requires a lot of equipment and nutrition. Losing or breaking one item may cause failure to finish, so a good race requires careful packing and preparation. 10-8, 1089. You've got to help me now. I've got where I am. I'm like, no, I can just. 1089. Sam? Yep. Our little dude, that goes on your left ankle. And you get a, a, a band. A wooden handy thing. Yeah. It's like, I need a band. So <laughs> I, they start Is it called a jetty? Yeah. Finish here. And I have run up between all these flags, yeah? And down that way to the bike. Just down there. That's it. Just follow the throngs in front of you. <laughs> or at least the half dozen or so. Yeah, three or four people. <laughs> The day of the race starts early, around 5 a.m. The first task is to go back into the bike compound and ensure the bike is ready for racing. My tyres need to be pumped up to 120 psi. Swim hard, <laughs> bike hard and walk fast. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> 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 well, let's just sit here for an hour now and then we'll start. <laughs> Time for a nap. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> okay, where's the coffee? Coffee? I thought you were having a nap. No, you're having the nap. Oh, right. The race starts at 6.45 a.m. with a 3.8 kilometer swim. Made it finally through the crowd. It's a mass start with nearly 2,000 swimmers. It can get quite scary if there are big guys on both sides of you swimming into your space and it's easy to get swamped. After a month with no swimming, I was struggling, but I made it to the swim finish and dragged myself out of the water. An hour done, but still a long way to go. Next is the bike leg, 180 kilometres over three laps. Thankfully, Bustleton is a flat course, so at least there weren't any big climbs. <laughs> However, my knees were playing up considerably on the first lap. It turns out that cycling across Australia is not good preparation for an Ironman, and I was paying the price. But overall, the ride went pretty well, except I lost a contact lens halfway through. I lost a contact lens. Can you go? Can you go back to the shop to the house and uh, get a couple? They're in the bath. Okay, you go. I'm haven't started running yet, so we'll see. <laughs> Bike ride went okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> See you in a minute. <laughs> the final leg is a full marathon run, 42.2 kilometres. 
My run training ended with a half marathon training run six weeks ago and only two three kilometer runs during the ride from Sydney. I had no idea if I was even going to be able to run, but strangely, my legs were going pretty well. <laughs> even as the temperatures hit 35 degrees Celsius. But I made it to the end. I crossed the finish line in 450th place. My legs finally gave way as I crossed the finish line. I was totally drained, exhilarated, but strangely deflated, as my journey was at an end. It's alright mate, you did it. It's awesome. Well done. I wasn't smiling that much on the last night, to be honest. I was just smiling whenever you saw us. <laughs> uh, it's an awesome effort, amazing. Oh, yeah, it's really long trip. <laughs> I can't think anymore. Don't need to, mate. Don't need to. It's done and dusty. Done and dusty. You've got relaxed and everything. Great finish, mate. Great finish to an epic journey. <laughs> yeah. 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 As I left the athlete's village, it was like going through a portal back to a normal life. So I'm going to very cool.